This video will teach you how to set up your luminaires for use in your AGI32 projects. Before you can place any luminaires in the AGI32 graphic area, you must first define them for this program session. To do this, select the Luminaire Toolkit, followed by the Define button. In this dialog, you will configure a list of what we call Luminaire Definitions that can be utilized for this project. You can return to this dialog any time to make modifications. Most of the buttons along the top toolbar lead to avenues to retrieve photometric files, usually IES format, but not required. They could be LDT or SIPSI. For this session, we'll focus on the Select button. This allows us to hunt down photometric files using a Windows Explorer-like interface. Please watch our separate videos describing the Instabase in the cloud and other methods of selecting photometric files. Click on the Select button and you'll automatically open the last folder you visited. You can navigate your computer system at will here using the same capabilities you generally use in Windows. When you arrive at a file of interest, one click will display a variety of details that are extracted or calculated from the photometric file. For example, here is the actual photometric file, with all the candela values and, more interestingly, all the description. Calculated metrics, photograph, if the file had been obtained from the Instabase at one point in time, polar graphs of luminous intensity, and LCS, or bug rating data. Click OK or on the file name again to retrieve the file. If the Smart Symbols is selected in the Luminaire Define dialog, which is the default setting, the software will try and match a symbol with the Luminaire based on a basic rule set. Symbols can always be changed later. Select the mounting type from the list. In this case, we'll select Pole. AGI32 will size the symbol in X and Y based on the Luminaire's luminous dimensions. This is extracted from the photometric file. Click OK or double-click on the symbol to advance. If you're not satisfied with the symbols offered or AGI32 doesn't provide a symbol selection, just click Cancel and the software will advance with a generic selection that you can change later. If Auto Define is enabled, the default once again, the Luminaire is ready to use. However, you will most likely want to make some changes before leaving the Define dialog. Now that our photometric file selection is loaded, you can see it here, let's look around a bit to become familiar with the dialog functions. First, the basic information. The description from the photometric file is loaded here in the lower left-hand corner, as is the classification data that's calculated. And, of course, the Luminaire Classification System, or Zonal Lumen Data for Bug Rating. Many of these metrics are exterior specific, but the software doesn't know how the Luminaire is going to be applied, so it's calculated for almost all Type C files. A photograph may accompany the fixture if it's been obtained from the Instabase. Polar graphs of luminous intensity tell us about the shape of the light distribution. We can look at this in more detail using the More button. In the case of the blue line, this is a vertical plane through the horizontal angle 65 degrees. If we look at the red curve, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 5 degrees is where the max candela occurs. If we take a vertical slice through the light distribution right here and then look at it in elevation view, we would see the blue curve. For the red curve, this is a horizontal cone through the vertical angle of 60 degrees. So if we say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, we can see the max candela occurs at 60 degrees up in the vertical. If we were to take a line and draw it from 60 degrees to the light source and then circumscribe the entire distribution and lift off the top, we would see this red profile in plan view. If that's not clear, watch our quick YouTube video called Understanding Polar Curves of Luminous Intensity. Okay, so let's move on to the meat of the dialog where you can make some changes. The most important place to start is the luminaire label. 
what do you want to call this luminaire? The defaults for label and description can be set from the defaults button. Right now the default label is file name and the default description is the luminaire catalog number from the IES keyword LUMCAT. You can change these as you like. Or you can simply substitute a new label of your choice. Let's call it A for example. Once we make a change, notice this yellow exclamation point. We'll need to click this Add Redefine button in order to save our changes. Notice this creates a duplicate definition of label A. Let's enter a light loss factor. You can do that by typing in the cell or you can use the Specify menu. All the different light loss factors from the IES handbook. We selected this luminaire to be pole mounted in the Smart Symbol selection dialog. So that's why there's a check mark in the pole. The default length of the pole is set to dynamic and attached to Z equals zero. This means regardless of what mounting height we use in the software, the pole always goes from Z equals zero to that height. Note, this is not the mounting height. Mounting height is flexible and it's not assigned in the definition process. You might have luminaires of many different mounting heights in your project. When a luminaire is on a pole, it will need an arm length, unless the symbol has a yoke or is a post top. The arm length is set as the minimum distance to move the symbol away from the center of the pole. Think of this as a distance from the center of the pole to the center of the luminaire. Change it as appropriate. We'll enter one. We have a single luminaire arrangement currently. We'll come back here in a minute. Notice we have two different symbol selections, a model mode symbol and a render mode symbol. Typically they are the same and this is dictated by a checkbox in the render mode symbol. Model mode symbol same as render mode. This doesn't have to be the case. You can choose two entirely different symbols, one for model and one for render. Let's look at the model mode symbol first. We can change its color easily by clicking in the color cell. Let's make it red. We can also make its line weight heavier if we like. Move it up to scaled one half a foot. Alternate symbols can be selected by clicking in the symbol cell. Custom symbols can be created as well. In fact, there's a separate video on that topic. In the model mode symbol dialog, the symbol is scaled to match the luminous area in the X and Y dimensions. Let's look here. In the X dimension, our symbol is one and a half feet wide. If we come back here and look at the luminous box as extracted from the photometric file, in the X dimension it goes from minus 0.75 to plus 0.75. That's one and a half. Same with the Y dimension at two. One and one, two. The insertion point of the symbol is generally the point reference to the luminaire mounting height. When the program is set in direct calculation mode, this is typically the bottom of the symbol which corresponds to the luminous area. In the render mode symbol, we have other settings that are relative to the program's full calculation mode for global illumination. We can select a color for the luminaire when rendered from the housing cell. And we can select a luminous color other than white. This might be color temperature, source color, or a color filter. When ready, click the Add Redefine button to save your changes. Let's see how easy it is to create a different definition for two luminaires back to back using the same photometric file of label A. Click in the label cell and let's change it to AA. Click in the arrangement cell select a back-to-back -back arrangement. Let's make it blue. That's all there is to it. Click Add Redefine and we have our back-to-back -back arrangement label AA. We can delete any definitions we don't want. There's the original definition. Let's delete it. We can also relabel any particular luminaire we like. So select it click the relabel key if we wanted to choose something other than A. Other functions, we can check the boxes if we like and actually send 
all files we check to Photometric Toolbox if we have it installed. Or we can delete all the checked definitions. And that's just about it. Once luminaires have been placed in your project, the number of locations each will be tracked and displayed in this column. You can also reorder the list if you like by selecting a definition, holding down the Alt key, and using the arrow keys to move it up in the list. This affects the order in schedules. You can also tag a luminaire definition with a non-unique identifier. This identifier could be used in schedules to refer to different arrangements using the same photometric file. Don't forget, you can read up on all this information in the AGI32 help system right here for additional details.